Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I want to talk about how to utilize one of the new functions on the Xtool D1 Pro. What I'm talking about are limit switches, or more accurately, limit sensors on the machine that now allow the machine to use absolute coordinates. This means you can use a grid to line up your work pieces and be able to accurately engrave or cut a piece based on those coordinates. I'll show you how to set this up and how you can use this in both Lightburn and Xtool Creative Space. The first thing you're going to want to do is secure your machine to a spoil board. The absolute coordinates really only work if you are able to know that your machine is always in the same spot relative to the grid you are using. I have released a 3D printed foot in the past, but now you can also use your machine to cut those feet out yourself. I have a file that I cut out of 5mm plywood and then attached down to a 2x2 two two foot spoil board. Now my machine will not move and once I burn the grid pattern on, I can remove the machine and put it back in the same spot the next time I want to use it. So now onto the grid patterns. I actually have made four grid patterns and this is for two reasons. The first is that the 20 watt laser is much larger than the 5 to 10 watt laser, so the 20 watt has a smaller work area due to that larger size. The work area of the 20 watt is 10 millimeters shorter in the Y axis, which is reflected in the different grid sizes. The second difference has to do with the rotary attachment sold by Xtool. They currently sell two different rotary attachments for the machine. The original rotary and the RA2 Pro. These grids have a section that helps with the lining up of those attachments. If you look at the bottom left quadrant, you will see something that either says Rotary Tool Attachment or RA2 Pro Attachment. The way this works is you line up the front of the rotary attachment you have with the line that corresponds to the rollers that you are using on the rotary attachment. When you do this correctly, it should line the center of the cup or tumbler or whatever else you are engraving on with the center of the grid. That way you can use absolute coordinates to move the laser to the center of the grid and always know that you have it aligned with the highest point on the cylindrical object you are trying to engrave. Now the reason there are two different versions of this is that both of the rotary attachments have slightly different dimensions, which means that they both don't line up in the exact same spot, hence the, the two different versions of the grid. So one more thing about the grid before going into how to burn it is that you may have noticed that the grid is slightly smaller than the advertised work area of the D1 Pro. And this is also because of two reasons. In my testing of the D1 Pro 20 watt, I found that if I tried sending my laser to the 430 millimeter mark on the X axis, I would trigger the limit sensor alarm. I actually found out that I could send the laser to 429, but not 430 millimeters without triggering the sensor. Now you can go into the Xtool Creative Space software and turn off limit switches so you no longer trigger the alarm, but then you still have to deal with the second issue, which is that the air assist on the 20 watt version will run into the wires that you have mounted on the frame. Now you can figure out a way to remount the wires or remove the air assist while burning the grid to make sure it's not an issue, but I decided that rather than dealing with the hassle, I would just make the grid 10 millimeters shorter. I can't imagine that would affect anyone too much and it prevents from having to deal with many other issues. So if you check out the link in the description to the grid, you will see that I have both Lightburn and Xtool Creative Space versions of the grid. In Lightburn, you open the grid that you want based on what I talked about before. The first thing you want to do after that is press the home button to home the laser to the limit sensors. If you set up Lightburn correctly, it should home to the back left corner of the machine. Once the machine was home, you want to make sure that you are using absolute coordinates from the Start From drop-down box. Once that is set, you must press the Frame button to make sure that your laser will be able to burn the entire grid onto the spoil board without running into any issues. Please do not skip this step. In fact, it doesn't hurt to do it twice just to make sure that you are okay. Be careful in the top right corner and make sure the wire doesn't get in the way. After you have double checked everything, press start and now you should be burning your grid. 
Now you should be able to use absolute coordinates in Lightburn. Every time you come back to the machine, you can home the laser and then find the exact same spot on the grid. Now for doing the same thing in Xtool Creative Space. I do have a version of the grid that works in Creative Space if you do not have Lightburn. Now, at the time of this video, Xtool Creative Space is in its beta version, so things may change slightly, but for now, this is how you burn and use the grid. First, open the grid that you need. It should be one of the .xcs files. The grid should automatically load in the correct position. Click on the Start button to move to the preview screen. Once there, make sure that the green dot for the origin is in the top left corner of the grid image. Press the button in the middle of the arrow keys to home the laser. After the laser is home to the top left corner of the machine, you should test to make sure there are no issues with engraving by pressing the framing button. This will frame the grid on the spoil board to make sure you won't have any issues when burning the grid. Once you have determined everything is okay, you can click the start button to start to burn the grid onto the spoil board. Now, when using absolute coordinates in Xtool Creative Space, it can be a little tricky. Again, with the beta version of this software, there are no settings to specifically tell the laser to use absolute coordinates like there is in Lightburn. So if you were to try to burn an image in this software and hit the start, you only have the option to tell the software where the laser will start in relation to the image. You can't currently tell the machine that the laser is at the home position, but you want the image to start burning at the X210 by Y200 position. You can only say that the current position of the laser is at the top left or top right or whatever of the image. So the way around this was I created a file called Absolute Coordinates. And all this file really is is a small square in the top left corner of the work area. It's set to a very slow speed and 1% power, so it won't mark on anything. But what it will do is when you add an image and click Start, you now have a point that matches the home position of the machine to set the origin to. The image you want to engrave should be offset by the proper amount. Again, this is a hacky way to do this, and I hope Xtool adds an absolute coordinate function to their software, so this trick is not needed. So that's it. I hope you found this informative and useful. You can find links to the files that I talked about in the video description. Thanks again, be safe, and we'll see you next time.